Pilate saw a man seated upon a host of angels adore, singing in unison, Behold him, the name of whose empire is eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. <clears throat> Pardon me. All the elders of Israel came in a body to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Now that you are old and your sons do not follow your example, appoint a king over us as other nations have to judge us. Samuel was displeased when they asked for a king to judge them. He prayed to the Lord, however, who said in answer, Grant the people's every request. It is not you they reject. They are rejecting me as their king. Samuel delivered the message of the Lord in full to those who were asking him for a king. He told them, The rights of the king who will rule you will be as follows. He will take your sons and assign them to his chariots and horses, and they will run before his chariot. He will also appoint from among them his commanders of groups of a thousand and of a hundred soldiers. He will set them to do his plowing and his harvesting and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will use your daughters as ointment makers, as cooks, and as bakers. He will take the best of your fields, vineyards, and olive groves, and give them to his officials. He will tide your crops and your vineyards, and give the revenue to his units and his slaves. He will take your male and female servants, as well as your best oxen and your asses, and use them to do his work. He will tide your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. When this takes place, you will complain against the king whom you have chosen. But on that day, the Lord will not answer you. The people, however, refused to listen to Samuel's warning and said, Not and so. There must be a king over us. We too must be like other nations, with a king to rule us and to lead us in warfare and, fights our, and fight our battles. When Samuel had listened to all the people had to say, he repeated it to the Lord, who then said to him, Grant their request and appoint a king to rule them. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Bless the people who know the joyful shout, in the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. For you are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel our King. 
Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, after some days it became known that he was at home. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door. And he preached the word to them. They came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men, unable to get near Jesus because of the crowd. They opened up the roof above him. After they had broken through, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to them, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there asking themselves, Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus immediately knew in his mind what they were thinking to themselves. So he said, Why are you thinking such things in your hearts? Which is easy, easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, pick up your mat, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your mat, and go home. He rose, picked up his mat at once, and went away in the sight of everyone. They were all astounded and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. When Pope uh, Benedict, uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict, was installed at his uh, installation mass, which was, uh, I guess it was uh, over 10 years ago now, 13 years ago, one of the things he mentioned uh, during that mass in his homily, he reiterated something that Pope John Paul II um, mentioned when he came out on the, um, um, in the logia, you know, to present himself really to the church after being elected pope. He said, you know, do not be afraid uh, to open the doors of your heart to Christ because he will take nothing from you and give you everything. Do not be afraid to open the doors of your heart to Christ because he will not take anything from you, but he will give you everything. Oftentimes we have it the other way around. Christ will take everything from us and not give us anything, right? That's the fear, I think, that looms way in the back of our hearts and why we don't often surrender totally to him, right? And that just takes faith to be able to do that. But it really flies in the face of our first reading today. It's from the book of Samuel. We've been reading through uh, 1 Samuel as we begin this ordinary time, uh, during the ordinary time, the weekdays, reading through 1 Samuel, the story of uh, the prophet Samuel, and ultimately how Israel uh, gets their first king. See, before that, they just had judges. So this is before the book of Samuel, you have the book of Judges. You have all these different judges, which would be like, uh, you know, the most common that we know is probably Samson being that judge, who would basically just kind of leaders within different regions of Israel, but they were not king. There was no king because God was their king. But at this point in Israel's history, 
Um, they now want to be like all the other nations. All the other nations have kings that lead them into battle. We want to be like them, right? It somewhat sounds familiar, right? The church wants to be like the world, so we're going to start implementing more things like the world, right? When in fact, she's not of the world. She's in the world, but not of the world. But what does God say? Well, if you're going to get a king, this is what he's going to do, right? He's going to take uh, your daughters. He's going to take your plowing equipment. He's going to take, 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 take. He's going to tax you, right? He, you're going to use you as slaves. You just keep reading down. He's going to take your male and female servants, your best ox, your best asses, and he's going to use them for all of his work. He's going to take, take, take from you, right? Um, it's like big government, right? We're just going to keep taking, right? He tells them this is what's going to happen, right? And they want a king anyway. And something interesting that he mentions too to, to Samuel is that they're not rejecting you, Samuel, because Samuel gets all upset when they want a king. But God says they're ultimately they're rejecting me as their king, and now they want an earthly king. And he lets them have it. He lets them have it. Now, if you know a little bit about the Old Testament, you know later on, I and mean, you just keep going down the line of kings, they're all pretty much bad dudes. They're just not good men right? King David himself probably being obviously the best, but he himself, we know the, the story of him in Bathsheba, right? He himself was much of a sinner as well. Um, and so all of these kings eventually just gets worse and worse and worse uh, for Israel until Jesus comes on the scene. Jesus, who is now uh, the true king of Israel, the king of heaven, Christ the king, right? He is the king that fulfills He's the new David, right? He's the new king, right? He fulfills all these other roles the kings took on, but he is now truly the king, right? The king of the universe because he is God himself. But this king is very different, right? Than all these other kings who are taking, taking, taking from the people, right? Enslaving them. Um, this king comes on the scene and he says the word take, but it's in a very different context. When he is at the Last Supper, he says, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body. But it's in the context of not taking from the disciples and not taking from us, but rather in giving. As a matter of fact, giving all of who he is, right? He can't give himself any more than what he did on the cross. He can't give himself any more than what he does in the Eucharist. But I think there's a mention, there's an there's a, there's a element of faith that has to take place there because the, what God gives to us is not often seen by the naked eye, right? It's not that God gives us a bunch of material things, right? And he wants us to have just, uh, to be totally comfortable in this world, right? Of course, he's going to take care of us, right, when it comes to our job and our basic needs like that, but it's not going to be total comfort, right? You may pray that you win the lottery so that you could have that $100 million gift, right? That's not the kind of things the Lord gives, right? Because ultimately, if he does that, he, he wants, our, I mean, wants us, our souls, right? They could lose our soul over that. He only gives what we need, but ultimately that has to be seen with the eyes of faith. We see in that first reading today, or excuse me, the gospel today, that paralytic comes in. These men drop him down. And Jesus sees their faith, the faith of these four men, his friends, and he says, your sins are forgiven. Now, if you hadn't been able to walk or move, you know, for decades, and you're coming to this man whom you hear about is healing all these people, and he tells you your sins are forgiven, I'm gonna, I can imagine you could probably be a little bit disappointed. Like, that's not exactly what I was looking for, Lord. But the Lord is making a point here. He's giving him something that can't be seen, but is far more important than his physical health, right? And that's liberation from his sins, right? That's ultimately salvation and eternal life, right? And not damnation. But in order to prove that he just forgave the sins that you can't see, he shows them what they can see, which is he says, rise, right? Get up and walk. But ultimately, our Lord is constantly giving, Right? He's not a king who takes away, but sometimes we don't always see what he gives to us. We don't always see. We, we really ultimately can't exhaust what he's doing at the Mass, specifically when he gives himself in the Eucharist. We will never be able to understand that completely. Maybe in heaven we will, but here on earth we won't. But as we get, grow in faith, 
more and more and more deeply reverence the great gift of the Eucharist that the Lord has given us in the Holy Mass, uh, the more we'll be able to see that he's not a God who takes from us. He's not a God um, who enslaves us, right? Who takes away our freedoms and takes away our joy, our happiness, but ultimately a God who completely gives to us, a king who gives, right? Who gives us completely. But he asks for us to see that faith, to have that faith, to be able to see all the things that the Lord gives us, the blessings, the graces, right? His very self uh, in the Holy Eucharist. And so as we continue this Holy Mass, we reiterate the words of Pope Emeritus Benedict, right? Don't be afraid to open the doors of your heart to Christ. He takes nothing from us, ultimately, and he gives us everything. As we come to this daily Mass, we know that he gives us his very self in the Holy Eucharist. And so may God bless you. May God be with you today. Amen. Opening the doors of our heart to our Lord that he may bless us with his mercy and his grace. We present to him our petitions and our prayers this morning. We pray for our church and for the intentions of our Holy Father, for the intentions of our Bishop Michael Duca, for all those who lead us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray for our world and for peace uh, in our world, especially um, in areas that continue to have uh, violence uh, and war, tyranny, or oppression. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for the family, especially in our own uh, country, for stronger marriages, for stronger family bonds and units. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray, Lord, uh, for all young people as they discern their vocation in life, that they may um, surrender to the Lord and open the doors of their hearts uh, to, to his will in their life. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for our own community, for those who are sick, those who are homebound, those who experience loneliness um, or despair in their lives, that the gospel may be a beacon of hope uh, and light in their lives. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for the intention of this Mass this morning and for all those in our hearts, and we especially lift up to you all those who have died, for the souls in purgatory, And for all those who need prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Loving God, we come before you, entrusting to you these intentions. We ask, Lord, for you to increase within our hearts the faith that we may see which you continually to give us, that we may grow more like you in all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With you, O Lord, is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light.
Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And have a wonderful day today.